beloved, it goes without mention that the highest standards for living, whether by believers or any man possible, is by the very standard of the love of God. The highest standard for any human being to live here on the earth is by this very standard of the love of God because the standard itself is God. The Bible makes us understand that there are three forces that exist. Force of faith, the force of hope, and the force of love. But it says very clearly, amongst these three forces, the greatest of them is love. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13. And now abides faith, hope, and charity, which is the, uh, uh, the old colloquial word for love. Charity is love. But the greatest of these is charity or love. Why is that so? Because in the first place, for faith to be active, it needs the help of love to be active. Galatians 5 verse 6 says, B, that faith works by love. So for you to enjoy a full workings of faith, it needs to work by love. Faith works by love. So faith needs love to work properly and appropriately. And hope in itself is a, a positive expectation of a future. You are only bound to expect a positive future when you know the person of love, which is God. You only expect for an ethical future when you know God. So again, hope needs the function of love. The way to victory, beloved, as a child of God is the way of love. When you read the first Corinthians, the 13th chapter, is a chapter on love from verse 1 to verse 11 thereabout. Uh, you find many things said about love from verse 4 to verse 8. It begins to give the characteristics of love. One of the foremost characteristics of love is thus, verse 8, says, love does not fail. It says, love never fails, right? But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will fail. They will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. But love does not fail. Kaduya. Which means a man who knows love and walks by love is a man who cannot fail. So the way to victory as a believer is the way to love. Beloved, whether you like to believe or not, the world we live in is a world that is stamped of the genuine love of God. The world is in dire need, desperate of the true love of God. The love of God, when expressed to the most of greatest criminals, will soften the heart of a criminal. There's no heart too cold for God that the love of God cannot melt. Power may not melt it. Revolution may not melt it. People's ideas, philosophy may not felt melted. But when a heart that is hardened really comes in contact with the general love of God, that heart will melt. That was what I believe melted the heart of one Saul on his way to Damascus to crucify, persecute the church. He met an encounter of the man of love. He said, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He was persecuting the church, but that was an encounter with Jesus on a particular day. And from that day, a man who was once a hardened criminal became an instrument in the hand of God to do great and mighty things. The world we need live in now is in great need of the love of God. John 15, 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. So when we speak about the word love, we think of many, many things. Some, it's about a feeling you have uh, when your other person, your spouse, treats you properly, you, you reciprocate, you respond to that. You know, uh, uh, when you look at Greek, there, there are three, four major words of, that speak of love. But the one we speak about is agape or agapel, which means the God quality of love. There's eros, and eros speaks as a word to infer erotic love, lustful love, 
there is filio, the love that is found amongst family, family love. But the love we speak about is agape or agapeo, which is a God quality and the God kind of love. What is that kind of love? Is a love that is willing and prepared to lay down one's life for another. That kind of love is self, selfless, not selfish, selfless, right? And that kind of love largely loves an object, please listen, not because of the state of the object, whether right or wrong, but because the lover is love personified. Wow. So God loves me and loves you not because you did right or did, did not do wrong. Do you get that? Let me rewind. God does not love you because he did right. And God does not love you because you did not do wrong. Why God loves you? Because God is love. It's important to get that. You know why? We will struggle to give the love we haven't received yet. No man can love like Jesus loved until we have embraced that kind of love. As it, as it said oftentimes, you can only give what you have. So spouses who have not really been loved or know what love is, can give love back. They don't know what it is. All they know is, you do me, I do you. My way or the highway. But we need to desire to encounter the God kind and the God quality of love. When we do, then we can reciprocate that love, number one, to God and to God's own children. So God's kind of love is selfless, not selfish not self-centered, is selfless. Doesn't love you because you did right. He loves you because of the nature of love. The Bible does say that love is so strong, it is stronger than death. As I said earlier, it is a force that can melt the hardest of the hearts of any criminal possible. Unfortunately, not many believers have come to capture the revelation of the love of God towards them. If they did, they would live their lives a whole lot differently. As a matter of fact, the love of God is the foundation for successful Christian living. Psalm 11 verse 3 says, If the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So the foundation of the righteous is the foundation of the love of God. Track with me. The love of God must be the anchor from which you view life. On a compass, there is a reference point of the compass. There's a reference point, the compass takes a cue to know where the north is, where the south is, where the east is, where the west is. They say reference point. In a like manner, when the compass lacks the reference point, it will not be able to articulate where the north is for real, where the south is, where the east is, where the west is. Likewise, for believers, please listen, the reference point of your compass of life as a believer is love. It is from that point you can know what faith is, what hope is, what anything else is, what joy is, from the point of knowing what love is.